yeah please yeah so my screen is visible yeah and i'm audible yeah but you just start the this uh, slide so yeah yeah it is fine fine now yeah okay uh, so thank you very much for the opportunity to talk on this uh, international platform to dr chawla and dr shalini and his team and thank you nk singh sir for this uh, introduction and i agree with you that uh, diabetes and bone is one of the neglected area actually and so far not given due attention because probably we are busy with uh, cardiovascular involvement renal involvement retinopathy and all these things but today i'll say that bone involvement in diabetes can be actually a fourth component of diabetes com microvascular complications so you can call the instead of triopathy you can coin the term tetropathy actually that include the diabetes as a end organ and what i am going to do is next 12 minutes or so i'll try to convince you people that yes diabetes and bone is an important area and that is having a significant effect so let's see what is the status of fracture risk in a individual with diabetes as compared to a non diabetic individual so on the upper left upper right corner you can see the risk of hip fracture from this meta analysis in patient of type 2 diabetes it is clearly showing that the risk is around one and half times more in case compared to the non diabetic individuals the situation is actually much worse in patients of type 1 diabetes and the risk goes up to seven times as compared to normal or the control patients in compared to type 1 diabetes in india the situation is not like the type 1 diabetes the reason is that in the best of the centers in the our country the mean age of type 1 diabetes in just 35 years or maximum 40 years and that's where we are not yeah. seeing such patients in our setting yeah. now let's see how blood glucose or the hyperglycemia harms the bone so on the right side you see that there is healthy bone while in case of other side there is a patient with type 2 diabetes we know that bone is made up of three important components one is the cellular component that is the one is osteoblast and you can see in the healthy bone the osteoblast number is good while in case of type 2 diabetes the osteoblast number is reduced the second part of the osteo uh, of the cellular component is osteocyte the osteocytes are nothing but the pituitary of the bone and that actually control the all the cellular function of the bone you see in the healthy bone the osteocytes are number is more as compared to the type 2 diabetes as well as their connectivity is very good in among the osteocytes in a healthy bone as compared to the bone with type 2 diabetes then we were talking dr wang was talking about the bone uh, fat in the adipose tissue so sorry fat in the heart or the fat in the brain you see here in patient of type 2 diabetes the adipose tissue collection is much more in the bone marrow as compared to a healthy individuals the next component is the mineral component and it is well documented that the cortical porosity which is increased in a patient of type 2 diabetes as compared to the non diabetic individuals then the small vessels because in the bone or in the bone marrow the vasculature size is the 20 micrometer that is qualifies for the microcirculation and that's why you can say the type 2 diabetes and the bone can be a uh, uh, what you call the uh, microvascular complication because of the capillary size is less than 20 micrometer and you see in case of type 1 diabetes in case of diabetes and the non diabetic there is number of vessels are more in the non diabetic or healthy individuals as compared to the individuals with the diabetes so the hyperglycemia harms in these many factors and we know that when the blood glucose is uncontrolled there is deposition of advanced glycation end products this ags deposits in the bone also and that leads to uh, uh, causes a decrease uh, causes the collagen cross linking that will culminates into decrease in the osteoblast addition to the bone matrix then there is a decline in the alkaline phosphatase that leads to decrease osteoid mineralization because of decrease activity of alkaline phosphatase then binding of the uh, binding of the receptor ag 
to the pre-osteoclast that increase the osteoclast action and there is increased osteoclastogenesis and we all know that osteoclasts are the cells those are responsible for the bone resorption and there is decrease in the osteoblastogenesis cells responsible for the bone formation. Because of all these three phenomena, there is increased risk of the bone fragility because of the advanced glycation and product deposition. The situation, let's see what is the situation among Indians. The situation among Indians may be very poor or worse because we have the onset of disease of diabetes almost 10 years earlier than the Western population. We have more central obesity, that's why higher insulin resistance. And because of this higher inflammatory markers. So all these three things ultimately leads to the more bone damage. On the top of that, there is a peak bone mass is not achieved because the onset of disease is at the younger age. And the females, there is menopause is also again early age as compared to the Western population. And on the top of that, high prevalence of vitamin D deficiency. So you can understand by this cartoon that the situation among Indians with type 2 diabetes uh, is much worse as compared to the Western or the Caucasian population. We conducted a small study which was supported by the RSSDI a uh, few years back. So what we did is that we selected the patients of the type 2 diabetes, duration of diabetes more than 5 years, their creatinine was normal and what we found is that on the DEXA scan that the significant number of patients in the male and the female uh, group, there is osteoporosis was seen in approximately 50% of the female patients and the uh, osteopenia was observed in around 30%. So you can imagine that the significant number of population of diabetes in our country is having the low bone mineral density. You can argue that the Western literature says that the BMD is increased in the Western population in type 2 diabetes, but in India, the situation is not the same. In the same paper, when we looked at the uh, <clears throat> risk factors for the fracture, what we found is the important risk factor is the female gender. It has an implication that if a female patient you are treating for type 2 diabetes, if there is history of the osteoporosis is there that needs close more attention. Similarly, the vitamin D deficiency was the important risk factor and the use of pioglitazone was associated with increased risk of the osteoporosis. So meaning by that, we should avoid in a female patient of pioglitazone if you are uh, having a history of osteoporosis especially. Now coming to the, uh, uh, what is the current situation that how bone is uh, good in the patient of type 2 diabetes. So we know that the bone strength is decided by bone quality and bone quantity. These two things. Bone quantity is assessed by the bone mineral density or the DEXA scan. The bone quality is <coughs> can be assessed by the various parameters, but that is in general, neither physician nor endocrinologist nor doctors are bothered about the bone quality and not much information is available on the bone quality. So what we did with the help of the IIT roper people, because they use this, assess the strength and the elasticity of the steel. So we took their help and uh, we published an interesting paper and uh, in the patients. So here is the two group of the patient we have collected. So non-diabetic group and the diabetic group. So these 70 patients with the hip fragility fracture. So this hip fragility fracture, generally our orthopedic surgeon, they remove the neck of femur and throw it. So what we ask them to please give us that bone of the hip, hip area after the fragility fracture when they are going for the hip replacements. And you can see the baseline parameters. There is no difference in the any of the baseline parameter in the diabetic and non-diabetic group except the in the hemoglobin A1C, which is obvious that HbA1c will be high in the diabetic group. Remaining all the parameters were comparable in these two groups. Now what we did is that we take out the from the neck of femur that trabecular bone. We did the micro CT of this tissue. And you can see on the non-diabetic bone and the diabetic bone that you visually you can have an impression that in a non-diabetic bone this trabecular thickness is more 
the number of trabecula is more as compared to the diabetic individuals. So we have clearly shown that the trabecular bone thickness and the trabecular number are less in the diabetic individuals or the diabetic bone as compared to the non-diabetic. Further, we assess the bone composition and what we found is that in case of non compared to the non-diabetic individuals, the diabetic individuals are less mineral to matrix ratio, meaning by that, again, it is showing the mineral content was less in the uh, diabetic bone as compared to the non-diabetic bone and it was a statistically significant. Further, we went on to assess the bone quality by the technique called nano indentation. Nano indentation is a technique in which what we do is that the needle is actually pierced in the uh, bone and that assess that how early it come back and how much stress uh, resistance it gives. So that is called the indentation. And in indentation, what we found is that there is reduced modulus in the diabetic individuals as compared to the in the diabetic individuals as compared to the non-diabetic bone. So it is clearly showing that the modulus is less in a patient of in the bone of the uh, diabetic bone as compared to the non-diabetic and modulus is nothing but it gives information about the elasticity. So the elasticity is good, the chances of fracture are less as compared to the elasticity is poor. Further, we assess the hardness and what we found is that in a diabetic bone, hardness is also less as compared to the non-diabetic bone. So it is again clear by the nano indentation that the bone quality in a patient with diabetes is poor as compared to the non-diabetic. Now it was about the trabecular bone. We again studied the uh, remaining part of the bone for the cortical bone was also studied in the and what we found is that in case of the cortical bone there is increased porosity in the diabetic bone as compared to the non-diabetic bone. So, meaning by that in an individual with diabetes that the cortical porosity increase. So, the cortical as well as the trabecular bone both are having the poor quantity as well as the quality. So, we know that it is difficult to take every time bone biopsy. So, we did the a surrogate marker that how we can assess the collagen. So, we what we did is that we selected three type of patients, three group of patients. One is the healthy individuals diabetic control and uncontrolled diabetic individuals. We did there, we collected their nail clipping. We know that nail has a collagen, type 1 collagen and the similar type of collagen is present in the bone. So we took nail clipping as a surrogate tissue instead of the bone. And what we observed is that in a patient with the healthy and the diabetic control, uncontrolled diabetic, you can see the structural properties are adversely affected in uncontrolled diabetes. Similar, the surface properties also evaluated and we found you can see in the healthy that nail is quite smooth as compared to the diabetic control. Uh, uh, controlled diabetes, it was poor, even it is further poor the uncontrolled diabetes. So meaning by that, it is a uh, practical in also, we know in diabetic individuals, the nails are brittle. So that is further support the clinical information. And we also studied the nail about the mechanical property and we found that the mechanical property again poor in the uncontrolled diabetes as compared to the diabetic individuals with control and the uh, healthy nails. So that again it is showing that collagen is also abnormally affected in the individuals with the diabetes because of the hyperglycemia. And when we compared the ratio between bone and the uh, nail and it is going classically hand in hand. So we can say that collagen is poor in the nail as well as in the bone. So this is all about the various mechanisms, how diabetes or hyperglycemia can affect the cortical and the trabecular bone as well as the collagen. Another interesting study was published from our department. We looked at the hip fragility fracture from the Tri-City, Chandigarh, Panchkula and Mohali, various hospitals. And 264 patients with the fragile hip fracture, their data were collected and followed up. What we found is that approximately 25% of patients are having diabetes out of these 264 patients. Meaning by that, diabetes is significantly contributing for the fragility fracture cohort. 
and hypertension is even more so you can say most of the diabetes patients are having also having hypertension so these both two are important risk factor for the fragility hip fracture when we followed these patients for their outcome and what we found is that at the 3 months approximately 12% of patients lost their life at the end of the 12 months approximately 20% of the patient lost their life meaning by that hip fragility fracture is associated with the significant mortality and if it is associated with diabetes the situation is even more worse so what i say that diabetes and fracture outcome is having poor prognosis they have delayed healing frequent infections they had a longer hospital stay and the more prospective cv events were there in patient with diabetes and the hip fragility fracture now how to treat if a patient is having the osteoporosis and individual with diabetes so currently there is no answer is available so our department conducted an interesting study in the patient with type 2 diabetes we are using the uh three drugs which are available for the treatment one is the teriparatide or the recombinant human pth jolidronate and the denosumab and another group was given just a placebo in form of calcium and vitamin d and other all three groups also received the calcium and vitamin d the 30 patients were selected in each group and uh, at the end of 6 months just we have collected the uh, one third of the data in the 6 months and what we found is that if the patients are treated with the teriparatide the response is very good this is a new modality that is called high resolution peripheral qct which is available in our department and we found that there is nice response with the teriparatide so what is the effect of these various anti diabetic drugs used for the treatment of bone bone uh, treatment of diabetes so generally the metformin is neutral but thiazolidine diuretics are associated with decreased bone mineral density as well as increased risk of fracture so these drugs should be avoided in a patient of already having suffering from osteoporosis or history of fragility fracture is there the uh, sglt inhibit 2 inhibitors their information is not yet available And the GLP-1 analog is one of the preferred drug for the treatment of uh, for the better bone health. Actually, so I conclude my presentation by saying that diabetes is associated with increased fragility fracture risk more in type one diabetes as compared to type two. Bone quality is compromised in diabetes individuals. Both the cortical as the trabecular bones are affected. the fracture outcome is poor in diabetes individuals as compared to the non diabetic individuals the drug of choice for osteoporosis in diabetes is not yet clear but very soon we'll get the results so thank you very much and i like acknowledge my department colleagues and faculty for their support uh, in collecting these data and publication thank you very much